So in this video, I'm going to show you a quick case study of how I use JavaScript from the development tools to automate migration of data from Storify off to Twitter. This is a real world case study, and I'm going to get to the point where I can take one of these and automatically create Twitter moments. All right, so Storify, I mean, I've been using Storify for um, kind of content marketing. Uh, when I go to a conference, anytime people tweet things from the conference, I storify those tweets and, and put them on my website. Storify closing down. So I have to migrate my data onto Twitter moments. Twitter moments are very similar. Twitter moments are essentially lists of tweets in a, a page. But there's no easy way to migrate these. Fortunately, we have testing skills. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I have to do is see, can I actually create a new moment automatically? So I can see here that I can create moments by adding in tweets. So if I go off to one of these things, and here's a tweet. So if I find the link for that, take that link and paste it in here, add it, and it gets added in the story. So if I can automate that, then I, in theory, I can probably start automating this. So let's find another tweet because it, well, it only lets me add one once. Let me copy this. So I need to somehow put some text in there. So that is an input field. So, yep. I think Twitter uses is we can get that field. And then I can set the value to that. Oops. Dot. Because it's a class, I need to put dot in. Rookie mistake. There we go. So I've managed to put hello in that field. In theory then, if I can Oops, must be a link. Let's put a link in. Link. There we go. So then the validation is passed. Then I need to get this button. And that is input class button. There we go. Let's use that. Back to the console. Dot class button dot click. And then that added that. So if, in theory, I can get a list of the links off of Storify, then I can probably do some crude automation here. So let's have a look at the links here. So what I want, now it's tempting to go straight into this link and pull out the URL there. But very often applications make themselves a little bit easier to automate. And there we go. That is a, that is it. And that has got a field called data permalink and that is the URL we want in there. So if I can get every list that is of data source Twitter, let's go in the console here. Uh, mm. Great, so it's got jQuery as well. So I want to get lists with data source Twitter. Five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five things there, five things there. That looks good. So then what I want to do is for each of them, I want to process for each. There we go. Uh, let's just console.log the uh, this.get attribute data, uh, no, what was it? Permalink? Data permalink. There we go. So that is the makings of what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to output the URLs and have them in a way that they can put in there. So I'm not actually going to output the URLs, I'm going to output 
code into here that I can copy and paste over here to actually do the work. And the work over here is typing in a value and hitting click. And that's pretty consistent over here because it's the same field each time. So what I need to do then is expand what I've got here. So I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit to make it easier to edit with. Normally, what I would do is I would put this in a snippet. But I'm just going to work in the console here for the moment. In fact, let's put it in a snippet just to show you how that works. So if I go off to sources, snippets, new snippet, uh, storify it. There we go. Then I get syntax highlighting and everything else. So what I need is I need a string. Uh, I'll call it that. Hardly anyone names their output strings with two U's, so it should be unique enough. Then in here, instead of doing a console.log, I want to start building up a string. There we go. Output string equals output string plus. Now, what do I want to output? I want to output uh, this. So let's put quotes around that. Because I'm going to generate code here. Then I want permalink. Let's make this easier to read a bit. There we go. See, this is why I use snippets, because you get syntax errors shown there. So. What is syntax error? Missing double quotes. Okay, that's okay. Uh, I want everything on a new line, so I need to put in a backslash n there. And then let's console.log the output string. So if I've done that right, what I should see at the command line is all the URLs in the val setting. So let's run that, run snippet, console, there we go. Let's copy and paste that into Twitter just to make sure it's syntactically correct. Now what we should see, or we might not even see it, it will happen so fast, that this should fill up. It'll probably, probably what we'll see is just this last one shown, or none of them. Oh, because I picked the wrong one. Idiot. I put in the one with the syntax error. Dot. Run it. Copy paste. There we go. So that's the last one gone in there. So all the rest went in. Now, I could automate the GUI, come in, type this in, wait for this to be ready, then click that, then wait for the action to happen, then do the same thing. We've got the benefit that because I'm putting these in in separate lines, the console will execute each one of these as it gets typed in. And because JavaScript is single threaded, it essentially waits. Put that in, does the JavaScript, comes back, put the next one in, does it again, and it all should happen fast enough. So if I intersperse this with a click, I think we're going to get what we want. So if I do plus, then the code that we had to click, make sure you pick the right one, please. Alan. And there's no parameters in there, so that's nice and easy. Paste that in with a backslash n. Semicolon to finish that off, make that look nice, and run that. So there we go, URL, click, URL, click, URL, click, URL, click, URL, click. So before I paste this in, let's just delete all these because Twitter doesn't like us putting in duplicate URLs in the stories. So, paste. Magic. One, two, three, four, five. So there we go. So I have partially automated the moving from Storify over here. Essentially, I've written some code, and I've written some code in sources. So I could leave that in sources, go to the next story, run it from here, go to the next story, run it from here. Or what I could do is I could create a bookmarklet for this. So if I go off to 
I can never remember the URLs for the tools. Evil Tester Bookmark Clip Builder, which is there. Mini Book Clark Mark Lit Maker. So if I rename this to be Storify, make Bookmark Lit, copy and uh, paste in the code that I've just taken from the snippets view there, then put this up onto my bookmarks, then got the console. Let's refresh this, get rid of that. I should have a bookmark clip now, but when I run it, there we go, it just creates the code. So I can go to any of my stories. Let's uh, convert this one and run the, there we go, this is looking good. So I can fairly easily now take any of my Storify stories and, well, that's quite large. So let's try that. And then copy and paste this into here and the when I paste it in this will automatically it will automate all that go through and just add all those tweets ding 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 tweets successfully added because automating does not have to be completely automated right we can use it to support our work that's what it's for but we need to first of all know how to uh, understand the technology I could not have done this if I didn't know how to use CSS selectors to find things, if I didn't have some basic jQuery knowledge to be able to find something, do a click, set fields, if I didn't know basically how JavaScript worked, if I didn't know how bookmarklets worked, if I didn't know how to use dev tools to inspect this, there's a lot of knowledge that is required alongside the simple fact of how can I figure out how to automate it to actually support the automating. And I don't need to build a full tool for this. I've only got, what, nine stories in there, but it'd be so time consuming to do that manually rather. I did not want to do that manually. I didn't want to go through each of those. I'm thinking when there's, what, 49 there? Click on it, open it, paste, da 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 da, ah, it'd be horrible. What if I make a mistake? If I make a mistake here, I don't really care. Then I can fix it manually. But I've automated it in a very crude way. That works. I will put this in a blog post so you can see the code um, the bookmarklet generator is already there. I use that all the time anyway. Um, so that is technical testing and lightweight automating using JavaScript and the dev tools. And it's a live case study because I needed to do this. So it's real world practical application of learning these automating JavaScript and technical skills.